So many of your projects recently have so much lore yeah. behind them. God of War with, uh, obviously, Asgard and yeah. Middle Earth with Lord of the Rings, Greek mythology with Percy Jackson. Yeah. What's your research process like? And do you ever, you know, pull from Asgard, put it into Middle Earth, pull from Middle Earth, put it into I, Percy Jackson? I, absolutely. To me, all of this comes back to cultural music from around the world. Where where does Asgard come from? It comes from Norway, right? Where does Greek mythology come from? It comes from Greece. Um, and even more, the rings itself has a sort of revisionist, like, uh, Celtic mythology and flavor. So I start there, right? I want to draw from the musical influences that the lore draws, narrative influences. And then from there, of course, I mix and match it up. I bring in uh, elements of, like, uh, North African, Mediterranean, even Asian colors. Um, I do like for a true fantasy setting to not be direct. If I could word it this way, the perfect way to approach it would be I have done enough research that there's a core sound that is respected. If you're playing God of War, you're hearing you're hearing Old Norse being sung by the choir, you're hearing Nordic instruments. However, this isn't a documentary about the history of North. And, you know, uh, these kind of Nordic myths are not history. They're myths. So then I do like to put my own voice on it mix things up and create something unique to that project. How does your process change when you're creating something for a long-running show, like my personal favorite show of all time, Beats of the Shield, hey, hey, um, I, which doesn't have necessarily, you know, there's comic source material, but a lot of these characters are brand new yeah. versus Tolkien, yeah. which has existed in shows, in movies, in books for years and years and years. How does that change for you? Do you feel like you have more to take from or is it more difficult without the blank slate it's interesting because in both cases in any situation i'm writing music for the story so if there's a lore that goes back i use it if it's helpful and if it's not i, I don't <laughs> right i mean like at a certain point my job is to make sure you enjoy this story feel emotion that's that's my job and it was so uh, sometimes it's sort of helpful to go, well, there's a, there's a long, there's a fan expectation. That's really what it comes down to. I scored Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And I thought, you know, as a fan, I expect to hear certain references to these old classic, like the Kukube scores. Um, so that was helpful to me, right? Um, and yet doing something like Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. where it's like, there really isn't an expectation here. Um, so it actually was also an effort to have the blank slate. And I got to write themes that I thought, you know, communicated these characters, you know? And I got to write this heroic march for our main characters. I see Phil Coulson come out in the first episode. I mean, I'm just, oh my God, I'm so excited. And yet when he shows up as sorry, right, in season six, it's like, oh, that's not going to work. Like, let's do a blues band. You know, they go to outer space and it's like, I mean, this is going to work. Like, let's bring in more synths. I just get to... I get to always evolve and tell the story that the show is to teach us our homework. Apologies, I know I was only supposed to ask too, but on that note, I can't help myself. Um, how does that change for something like Rings of Power, where it's scored for the entire episode, start to finish, and there's yeah. no breaks in it? Uh, Rings of Power, I made sure that I laid out all my themes in advance. In S.H.I.E.L.D., right, I don't know if they're going to go to space. When we go to space, whoops, I got to change. That's not going to happen on Rings of Power. I know where we're going. I think we all kind of know where we're going. Um, so I wrote themes for all the characters. There were 17 themes at the beginning of Susie 1. And some of them I even put through their faces. If you listen to Elendil and Isidor on the Season 1 soundtrack, this is the theme for these characters from Numenor. On the record, it, there's this passage that isn't in the show. What it is, is this gigantic, tragic, massive statement of their theme. Because I needed to know... At the last alliance of elves and men, at some point in the future, is this thing going to work? I'm not saying I, I know it'll sound like that, but I had to know, I'm writing that in season one, it was a father-son dynamic. It was, in, it was intimate. So on the record, I, I, I put it on the record because I thought, oh, this sounds really great. I'm going to use it. But that's me looking at it. That's me making sure that theme that I'm introducing in season one is going to work in season. So it's a just, 
Both are a luxury. I love the luxury of knowing and planning it out. I also love the luxury of coming in on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and going, we're going to space? We're going to space. You know, here we go. Let me bust out the synth The exact same for what the team would be like. Oh, it's space today. Yeah, I really felt like Coulson a lot. Like, this is what we're doing, guys. Suit up. Here we go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the weekend. Thanks.